And we're live. Live action. Live. No, there you go. Lounge gonna, it out. Yeah. All right. Welcome back to the podcast. Welcome back. Welcome, welcome. It's been welcome. a minute. Yep, yep, yep. Welcome back to uh, Beyond the Metcon. A little different uh, format, yes. a little different layout. The the sweet sound of a barbell drop yeah, in the right, background. Right. You hear all the banging. That's right. That's Love really it. what we wanted for you guys. Yeah. To know that we actually do cross that. <laughs> we yeah. are here sometimes. Yeah. So we're uh, recording today in the uh, the old gym. That's right. The, That's good. The gym. So you kind of hear some music in the background, people talking. Nice little scenery. Ashley, yeah. Ashley dropping the barbell. We've got a live studio audience. That's right. Nobody's looking at us. That was their cue to laugh. And they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Missed it. <laughs> no one gives a shit. All right. So uh, today's podcast, we're going to talk about uh, some different things, uh, like myths that yeah that people. I think there's some uh, misconceptions on both from people outside of the CrossFit community and then those even within it. Yep. Um, and these aren't all of them. Some of these can be kind of comical yeah, yeah. too, I think. Um, but some things that I'm going to guess have crossed some people's mind and even crossed my mind, I think, when I started CrossFit. Yeah, so totally. Good kind of topic for us to yep. dig into. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, we talked about doing just like a, we're calling it the Mythbusters yeah. episode, but you know, it's probably copyright somewhere. Right. So. Right. <laughs> we're going to act like that didn't happen. Yeah, here we go. Um, but no, uh, I think the biggest one is the your your first first thought was yeah. the experience. Right. So so I'm going to shoot this at you, right? Oh, like I, like I'm oh. an inexperienced. Throw it at me. I'm an inexperienced person, right? I come yeah. in, I'm like, hey, I've heard of this CrossFit thing, but I can't do it because I don't have any fitness experience. I've never played sports. You don't know how to snatch? No, so you need to leave. I've, I've, I've never really done any. Either. I've never done any Olympic weightlifting. CrossFit's just not for me. Right. Yeah, and then, and all jokes aside, that's like a serious uh, uh, a conversation that I've had with numerous people. Is they're like, you know, I never played sports. I never just like the things you just listed. And like personally, I never played sports. I never did any of that right. stuff. So it's like, and now I own a CrossFit gym. So, so that that just for me, it's like, okay, that that myth has been busted. But no, the the biggest thing is that as long as you come in with the willingness to learn and have an understanding for it's going to take a little bit to actually learn the movements, right. then you can do it. Like anybody can. It doesn't matter age. It doesn't matter uh, fitness level, anything. It's, as long as you come in with the, the willingness to drop your, your ego, drop your wall, and be like, I'm going to learn this because it's, I mean, it's just like anything. Like if you learn to ride a bike, you learn a new, new activity, you learn anything, you have to like you, no one just steps in and knows how to draw a masterpiece. Right, right. I mean, people do, but they're super outliers. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I think the the big thing in CrossFit is everything takes time. There's yes. there's very few things that even from someone who played collegiate football, there's very few things that translate. Right. Yeah. Like, sure, I know how to jump on a box, but I didn't ever do it under fatigue, right. really, and those kind of things. Right. So. I don't, you know, from from your very beginner athlete, from your person who walks in the door for the very first time, you're you're gonna get the same kind of workout that everyone else is gonna get. Yep. And and what's great is is the infinite, you know, amount of levels to scale things yep. too. I think is huge. Yep. And and that's the biggest thing is the scaling thing. So whenever someone comes in, they see kind of they're like okay uh they have uh, 45s on their bar i need 45s on my bar okay right. they're they're doing pull-ups i need to be able to do pull-ups and and that's kind of the expectation because that's what people coming into a situation they don't want to come in looking like they don't know how they don't want to come in looking like oh, oh this this there's a new guy here it's like yeah. yeah it doesn't matter no um as long as you have a good coach and someone that's willing to work with you which all of our staff you guys are freaking awesome are, are willing to work with everybody that's brand new and make them feel welcomed um, as long as you're willing to take that step back and know that it takes a while, just like you said, it takes a little bit to learn because something that we do in CrossFit is like the, the snatch, the, the kipping yep. pull-ups, the double unders, or just jump rope, the, the, those things, those are, uh, we need to build those neuromuscular patterns. Right. It's just like learning to write. Like, right. uh, take someone who has like a brain injury when they relearn how to write, they don't just pick the pencil up and be like, Oh yeah, I remember how it's like, <laughs> no, you have to like reteach yourself. It's the same way. It's we're, we're trying to teach you something new where it's not just like a go run. Everybody right. knows how to run, whether they do it right or wrong, they know how to run. Do just run. It's natural. It's in our, who we are. So it's like, just go run. Cause it's what we've done since we could walk. Exactly. Just yeah, go run. exactly. Is run. So like learning these movements, just takes time um our gym personally we do four one-on-one sessions with with our uh trainers it's you and the trainer and we go over each thing like i uh was working with a lady the other day and i was like okay do you know uh i was like do five air squats you know we're just warming up 
And I was like, let's do five air squats. And she goes, what's an air squat? Well, yeah. I was like, okay, cool. That's yep, where we're that's at. Where I at. know where our level of experience is now. And I was like, okay, so an air squat's when you squat in air. And I kind of like, you know, broke it down, explained it, fixed your squat. And whenever we do the, the one-on-one sessions, we try to teach them the movements from where they are. Right. And, and this is like an experience thing and also, too, of like what you – what you value as a coach but like for me personally if i get you moving in that movement to where it's like if i give you a bar and i teach you how to do a snatch and yeah there's like 12 things i can fix but at least if you're moving through the motions if someone outside looking in like oh they're snatching today. yeah yeah and that's that's what it's about because it's like me personally i was just working with greg earlier and he's trying to fix my snatch because i, I have a few things that i do and he's like try this try this try that and i've been doing this now for 10 years yeah and i'm like yeah. i'm 10 years in and exactly. i'm still working on my technique right so whenever people come in they have this expectation of i don't know how to do that i can't do that yeah or uh i'm i'm not i'm, I'm not young enough or you know like i have you know 50 pounds of weight that i need to lose before no right exactly but yeah. yeah i think the big the big thing you said right at the beginning was like check your ego at the door whether yep. it's it's you know your your people who are more experienced or your beginner people, I think if you're able to check your ego at the, the door, you're going to maximize your potential in yep. this fitness space yes. because you're going to be okay with some setbacks and yep. some potential failures. And maybe, it, you know, we're human. We're going to feel embarrassed sometimes, yep. right? And if you're able to kind of push that aside and, and see the reason you're doing it, remember yep. that why yeah. Yeah. you're here, yeah. I yeah. think, um, you know, it helps, it helps your um, – your mental state obviously helps you physically. Yes. And then, you know, once you get past that initial, like, oh, I'm nervous, I don't have any fitness experience, you'll yeah. you'll fall in love with kind of the community. I'll say, like, whenever I first started out, so I started out at a gym back home for all my people in Durant, Oklahoma. It was at Nautilus. Oh, uh, what a, where the wind comes sweeping down the <laughs> I can go there. Let's go. Uh, but no, so Josh, uh, he owns it, and it was like, it's just a regular global gym, just a regular gym. And I started doing the CrossFit stuff. I hung my rings from the rafters that I would bought. You know, I was doing all that dumb stuff. And I basically spent almost two years doing everything on my own. Like, I'd set my phone up, record myself, go home after I finished lifting, and I'd analyze all my lifts to kind of see what I was doing wrong. And I'd right. go back the next day and try to fix it. I never had a coach. I didn't have a coach for the first, I think, three years of working out or whatever. Three, four years of working out. And that includes, like, bodybuilding stuff. And, uh, and I – watching you guys come in and have a coach from day one and to drop the ego in the sense of like i have to be able to do x sure dude i see people like it took me almost four years i think three three and a half three years somewhere around there i think it was i'm kind of including my like bodybuilding days um i would say just crossfit i started that in 2011 um i did my first crossfit workout in 2008 and then it was like never doing that again <laughs> that so, was horrible that was terrible uh but anyway so first when I like officially started was in 11. I think I got my first muscle up in like 13, maybe. Okay. So a couple years later. Right. And I see people coming in, they're getting muscle ups within the first like six months. Right. And it's like, man, had I had a coach and like, not that I had an ego about me, because please believe I didn't. Yeah. I had no expectations for yeah. myself. But, but to know that you're stepping into a space that where people are going to watch you, they're going to correct you, and they're going to teach you everything. This is what you're doing wrong, let's fix this. This is what you're doing wrong, let's fix this. I have no expectations of you to lift the RX weight or to even put weight on your bar. Yeah. That makes such a massive difference on like this like bell curve of like how fast you 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 progress through the movements. Yeah, definitely. And and honestly, I think that's a great leading to to kind of my second thing I want to touch on is um, is your is your athlete at whatever level? Yeah. Honestly, whatever level, with the expectation of, I have to RX everything. If whatever right. it says RX, I'm doing it right. regardless of my skill level. Yeah, I'm not sure where. I mean, I, I, uh, I, was, I was gonna say I'm not sure where that started, but I can see where it started. I mean, like, okay, so if we're gonna do bodybuilding, we're gonna do five sets of ten bench press, five sets, whatever, whatever. It's like, okay, cool, that's what I'm gonna do. So when you come into the gym and you see like, okay, we're doing uh 10 squat cleans at 185 uh 400 meter run and 10 box jumps i don't know whatever if like if you see that you're like okay that's what it's written that's what i'm gonna have to do right so for some reason that's the expectation for people for themselves when they come in right they see that rx and they think that's what i have to do right the other side i would say and this is something you could you've probably seen is that if i see you doing it that means i have to right do it. yeah absolutely and and that's 
I, I feel like that's such a – I don't know. It, it's hard because, like, obviously mo- – some I was going to say, obviously uh, uh, that's not the case and that's not what we're wanting. But a lot of times that's people's goals. First goal is going to be I want to be able to RX most workouts. Right. I remember it was uh, Max. Camera might be able to see this. This is Max. Hey. I don't know if you can see him or not. Uh, I remember I had programmed a workout that had, like, I don't know, something ridiculously heavy. And I'd say like 97% of the people in, in the gym scaled it that day. Right. Meaning that they couldn't do the weight or yeah. whatever it was. And Max came up to me and he was like, I like that you did that. And I was like, really? He goes, yeah, because it helps you realize like, oh, I need to check my ego yeah, and scale okay. back a little bit. Sure. And that's okay. Right. Um, but, yeah, for some reason people think that, okay, I need to need to do all this X, Y, Z. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it, it, it's just so much of a – I don't know. We, we are humans to where, like you said, if I see someone else doing it or if it says this is what I'm supposed to do, I feel like it's very easy to be like, I'm doing it. I don't right. care. And, and that's and that's, I think, a bad stigma within CrossFit as a whole. Yep. Um, because, you see, you know, people here and even people that at other gyms I've been to are doing things that they shouldn't and they're going to hurt themselves because they just felt like they had to right right and and i'm curious if it's okay so like i'm like all right lambert you're brand new to fitness let's go work out here's a scenario we're gonna go run a full marathon i don't want to me neither (laughs) sounds terrible how do i scale that you're right but what i'm saying is your immediate thought is we're gonna run what is it 27 miles 26.2 is a marathon okay so if i tell someone you're gonna run 26.2 miles they're gonna be like "Mm, nope can't do that yeah that's a little long i've not trained for that you're right but if i tell them hey i want you to deadlift 405 and they've never trained for it they're gonna be like that sounds heavy yeah and it's like i think what it is 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 a uh, perception of what it is like they don't right. there's no reference point to it sure so if we got to go run or bike or do something that you can just go do whatever that's a great analogy i've never i've never thought about it like that right like you could say hey go run a marathon and people would be like oh my gosh okay but mm-hmm. if you said go deadlift 405 they'd probably be like yeah i don't yeah. know that i can do that that's pretty heavy which sh- those should be exactly synonymous the same. right yeah. right exactly so I, I think that's what it is is just a, a experience of understanding like when you see someone snatch 225 guy or girl girl is obviously way more impressive yeah. uh, but if you see a girl or a guy or girl snatch whatever that weight as us the experience we're like we know what it takes to get there right but someone coming in they're like yeah they got some weight on the bar yeah cool but it, it's just because they don't understand what it takes to get there so that that kind of goes and, and this is something i want to touch on that you brought up later is the crossfit is the, not the goal or sorry crossfit games so it's kind of like when you step into the 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 pitcher it's like okay i need to be able to do that it's like no you don't can right. you do an overhead squat or a snatch with an empty bar yeah exactly with full range of motion pain free can you do that Great. Now we're on. We're it. on the right we're track. On, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Maybe add two and a half. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I and I honestly think. So I was actually just having this conversation with my wife, Courtney, um, mm-hmm. as she's come back. She took a little break during COVID, but but she's back. And it was yesterday's workout that had a row and bar muscle ups and strict handstand push ups. And she's like, you know, what should I do for the bar muscle ups? She's like, I can't do bar muscle ups. I don't. I don't want to do jumping pull-ups. I don't get anything. She's like, I'd rather do ring rows. I get a really good workout on those. I'm like, I'm sure ring rows suck. Yeah, they really do. And what I was just like explaining to her, and I think we both tried to start, you know, letting people know is like her goal is not to do bar muscle-ups. She she just wants to come do a good workout. Feel sweaty, out of breath. I'd rather do ring rows, although it may not be a progression to get a bar muscle-up. That's not her intent. That's not her goal. And I think there's a lot of people – that may be in similar situations where they're like, okay, I'm just going to do this stimulus because it's written on the board. It's written on the board, yeah. but it's not the in- intention. They're not getting what yep. they should have if they would have done something different. Yeah, and and that that's a as a as a gym owner, gym manager, programmer, whatever you want to call it. That that is a a hard line sure. to try to like cross sometimes because it's like so whenever we program. One of the things I heard, uh, if, like way early on, which I'm sure you heard this before, is uh, program for the best, scale for the rest. Right. right. So the thought process behind that is to try to keep everybody progressing, keep yeah. everybody moving forward. You don't want someone to be stagnant or feel like, oh yeah, we're doing this again. I can do 300 of those or yeah. you know whatever. So it's you always want to kind of progress everybody, whether it's the beginner that's brand new that's never done a bar muscle up to the person that can string 20 together. It's yeah. like, Okay. So how can we challenge everybody across the board? 
So all that being said, whenever you're, I'm riding workouts or whenever we, uh, we, we get our programming from Jim Ship that we've talked about in the past, whenever I see their workouts with like heavy squat snatch plus ring muscle ups and rope climb, you know, all this, <laughs> it's like, what the fuck, you know, yeah. as someone who's brand new, it's like, like, like your Courtney coming back, like your wife, like she's, she sees the bar muscle up and she's like, look, I know it's not a progression to get there. I get a good workout of ring growth. Perfect. I mean, ideally, uh, looking at that, my goal would be for her would be, okay, let's get to where we can at least do one strict pull-up, right? maybe 10 kipping, like at the end game goal. Right. And I feel like that's a solid goal. Sure, yeah, I, absolutely. I think the, the, the issue when it comes to stuff like that, and this is nothing towards Courtney, is I think the issue is there's this expectation of, okay, it has bar muscle-ups on there. That's what I'm supposed to be able to do. I can't even do a freaking pull up. I'll try to do a ring. You know what I mean? It's like, what? The, like I can't even. You know what I mean? That's like saying run a marathon when I can only run 400 meters. Right. But it's like, okay, cool. Well, what's our baby steps to move? Maybe you never get bar muscle ups. It doesn't matter. Right. Like right. that's a that's another myth that it's like you don't need to be able to do bar muscle ups in order to be fit. Yes, you absolutely. You don't not. need to do full squat snatches with like. 200 plus pounds is guy or girl to be fit right no it's it's i think it's just a level of expectation for the fitness that is it's like like you said like courtney she's like i get a lot out of ring rows it's because they're fucking hard yeah ring rows suck every time i've ever done them in workouts i'm like holy shit this yeah, is i don't want to do this anymore this is our scaling <laughs> yeah, for pull-ups exactly. give me pull-ups all day yeah but uh well and i and i think my i think my i, th I think my point is it's each individual yes. right like yes. you will say Here's the scaling options, mm -hmm. and her situation was very isolated, right? Because yes. you don't you don't want to write every yep. single option. Uh, scaling option for something like a bar muscle up, or you'd have chaos in here. You yep. know what I mean? So, yep. I think what I would encourage people that to have those conversations with the coaches and and try to get what's intended out of it. Sheesh. And uh, and we'll make sure that you know you're get you're yep. getting the best workout you can. No, no, and I agree with you because it's and that's the hard part, like. Like, this is a conversation I've had with so many people, including my wife, Brittany, recently, was, like, we talked about gymnastics. So, if I were to say we're going to learn the squat snatch today and you've never done it before, like, cool, let's learn this. I'll give you the PVC pipe, broomstick, just your arms in the air, yeah. whatever. Cool, let's learn. Okay, we get the basics down, jump, drop, jump, so overhead, press, all the basics. If I say, all right, we're going to go over bar muscle-ups, pull-ups, whatever – it's like, okay, how do we start that? Yep. So the the barrier to entry to gymnastics, I feel like is super difficult to get to because sure. like let's say you're ten pounds overweight or you've just never tried to do a pull up before, so that, that strength is not there. You know what I mean? So it's like that barrier of entry is super low or sorry, super high to be able to get that. So it's super intimidating. But like you said, like I can't write every scaling option on the right. board. But there is progressions like Courtney because she came up to me and she's like, I want to try the handstand push-ups, but that's a lot for me. Uh -huh. And I was, she was like, what do you think? I was like, I don't know, maybe four? It was 16. Yeah. I was like, do four, do the other 12 as push-ups. Yep. And I was like, if you have to scale the push-ups, we'll scale the push-ups. Sure. And I think because Courtney has you, obviously, uh, she's been in it long enough, she can approach me and be like, hey, I don't want to do that. Can I do yeah. something else? <laughs> right. You know, where it's like other people are like, oh, it says it on the board, I have to yeah, do it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and that kind of goes back to what we talked about in a previous conversation was, this is my goal for you. If your goal is not that, we can change different meet stuff. Meet somewhere. Yeah, yep. exactly. I want to meet you somewhere. Like, if it's bar muscle-ups, we don't need to do bar muscle-ups. Let's get to, like I said, can we get to where we're doing a strict pull-up maybe some kipping pull-ups, right. something like that, to where you're building that strength, body awareness, those like body control, stuff like that. Like have an expectation for yourself in the sense of like, if it's, if the RX is like ridiculously whatever, then, then have in your mind, it's okay. I'll still have a good workout. Right. I'll still get something in. Uh, but like thinking about when I started, like I was doing stuff that I should not have been doing. You know? <laughs> right. I was like trying to like I remember I blew my back out for like two weeks. Oh, I'm sure. And all I did was just really exhaust my. I, I couldn't brush my teeth. Like when I brushed my teeth and bend over to like get water, I'd fall down. <laughs> it's because I mean, like literally, I just I had to like start drop. I yeah. dropped to my knees to get water. Oh over to my, my. It was bad. Like, I'm doing something wrong. Something here. wrong, yeah. and yeah. it was because I was like full halloween cat arch doing deadlifts right and yeah. i had no idea and nobody there to say no one everybody hey, was like drop your ass idiot. Yeah. this freaking jackass right but no so uh but all that being like what i was getting at was like i was doing stuff that i shouldn't have done and i was doing stuff wrong 
so I never had anybody to tell me. So right. l- l- if take that experience and put someone in my class with me, I'm not going to let that happen. Yeah, exactly. Like like Courtney, like she's like, I like ring rows. Cool, let's get to where you can do ring rows. Our goal is you're starting at, let's say, a 45-degree angle with your feet. Let's get to where we're moving slowly, 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 slowly. And then if you're doing horizontal rows, yeah, that's those are way hard. Those really suck then, for sure. Cool, if you're able to do 10 of those, let's try to move up to a pull-up bar. Yep. So it's like there's always progressive steps that you can take no matter where you're at. Right, right. And again, if because it's not something you want to just be like, well, I'm just going to do ring rows every single time because then there right. won't be any progression Right. Um, if you're not – trying to you know to make it a little bit more difficult every time right so we have a uh it's a a new i don't know if they're if it's like mom and son or mom and it's like i have no idea i just know that they come in and they're freaking awesome but she's always done ring rows and the other day i was like have you ever done the banded pull-ups and she's like no and i was like all right let's do a bandage trick yeah. pull-up so i loaded her up a band she needed another one i was helping her and then afterwards she's like that was cool i didn't think i could do right. that and it's like awesome yeah exactly that's what we're going for it's like now we're going to progressively step to and she can go back to the rings yeah. if she wants um the thing is is as long as i always tell people this they're always like yeah but it's skilled it did you get sweaty yep did you get out of breath did you have a good time yep that's it that's it the have a good time is kind of, I don't know. It's relative. We're doing burpee box jumps today, <laughs> and someone was like, I'm not having a good time. Yeah. Like, no one no, does. No one is. No right, one does. Right. But, no, I think that, that that thought process of I need to RX everything or get as close as I can is is a problem. Like, you, like, like get as close as you can is great to an extent. On the other side, like, we, we always talk about, RXing movements and in the sense of like it says bar the other thing that other people that people need to realize is like distances right let's say we're running 800 as a coach as a programmer we typically have something in mind that we want you to do okay so if we're running 400s my my thought is you're going to try to stay around the two minute mark under over whatever but if it's taking you three three and a half minutes to run a 400 yeah we need to pull that back yeah and that's because at that point you've missed the intent, right? Exactly. You've missed the stimulus. Mm-hmm. It took you too long. Mm-hmm. That's exactly right. Because, um, like, this morning in our interval class, uh, it was a hard workout. It was way hard. Like, the the we did some sled pushes, and those just n- never comfortable <laughs> right. ever. And I added an extra lap, which we typically don't do, so it just, like, sucked that much yeah. more. But it was taking some people way too long, so they just – They've been doing it long enough. They know they just cut it down to one. Sure. I was like, that's perfect. If you can't keep moving and keep this steady pace, I'm not saying that, like, if in a workout, let's say we have six 400s and a bunch of other stuff, if you can't stay at a minute and a half per 400, you need to – no. Like, there's an under over. Like, if your first one's at 150, second one's at 152, 155, two minutes, 210. You know, if you start getting around 220, 230, 240, it's like, oh, okay, well, we either over-program the workout in the sense of, like, destroyed you and you can't physically do that, or we need to scale that back. Yeah, exactly. So knowing that you can scale distances, everything is scalable. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If it's, like, mile run, we need to run at 800 if it's or 400 or to the door and back. You know what I mean? Like, there's always ways of scaling. and. Don't be afraid to scale the runs. Don't be afraid to scale the distances on the, the bikes. Like, talk to your coach, obviously. For don't, sure. Don't just do it. Yeah. Don't just be like, yeah. yeah, it works. Yeah, exactly. Like, there's a reasoning that we program things a certain way, but realizing that you don't because it's just like the couch to 5K thing. Right. Have you ever seen that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's like the, exactly like that. They don't just say get off the couch and go run a 5K. Go run a 5K. It doesn't work like it's that. It's typically like run to the end of the block and back. Right. You know, it's like so, it's progressively over six months till you can run or walk a 5K. Right. Definitely definitely a work in progress. Mm-hmm. And, um, but you know, my, my kind of final thing on that would be, yep. again, check that ego at the door. Yes. Understand what, um, you know, what the intended stimulus is and work with your coaches to – to make sure that you're, you know, meeting that mark. Right. And then whenever you say ego, I, I, I think I made a Facebook post about this a long time ago. Like, egos are good and they're also bad. If you can realize both, then I think you're on to something. Right. Egos are good because they're going to keep you in check in the sense of, like, a standard. Like, okay, um, 
this is the workout. It's three rounds for time. My ego tells me I need to finish this rather than getting a round and a half in and being like, oh, I'm tired. Screw it. Whatever. <laughs> I'm done. Right. I'm done. I'm just going to cut the rest in half or just quit. Right. Like your ego in the sense of like you're, you're setting yourself to a standard. But the other side is your ego shouldn't drive you to hurt yourself because Joe is over here doing right, the same exactly. thing. Right, exactly. So, yeah, I agree with you. Drop the ego at the door. Realize you're in a place of learning. And realize that in a CrossFit gym, we all care, but we don't care what you're doing. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And then that's something we can talk about, too. Yeah, yeah, I think that's I think that's a good one. You know, um, we've kind of mentioned it in the past a little bit, but didn't spend a lot of time talking about it. Um and it's further on our list, but I think it's, I think it's good to talk about is that yeah. there's this myth, I think across CrossFit gyms is that like people are watching you and people are judging you and, and being like, Oh, well, so-and-so only did 225 on their clean, yeah. uh, loser. You yeah. know what I mean? Like what a weakling. I am here to tell you nobody cares. No, not, not nobody cares in the sense of like, Hey, you're not as strong. You're not as fit as I am. Right. People, people are going to watch you in terms of in, for encouragement. Be like, yep. Hey, man, that's awesome. You're doing great. How'd it yep. go? That's, there's definitely that right. type of watching, and there's coaches watching. But in the sense of watching to to judge or try to try to beat you in a negative kind of space, doesn't exist in my in my world. No, same. And I, I'm wondering if it comes from the regular gym space, like the global gym space. Mm -hmm. Because, like, I, I go to uh, the boss of here. It's just a regular gym to sit in the sauna. And it's weird. From the front door to the sauna, sitting in the sauna to the front door, I feel judged <laughs> the entire time. I'm like, this is weird. Like, yeah, I, I just like I just walk straight in there, get in the sauna, put on my headphones, listen, and I leave. And I yep. still feel like people are like, what's this guy doing? Yeah, exactly. Like, you don't wear something that says CrossFit, Oh, do you? please believe I do. <laughs> it's all like, yeah. my CrossFit sweats, my CrossFit yeah. shirt. Oh, that's probably why they're staring. I'm like, what's this guy? Loser. But I think that that's the normal thought is that everybody kind of judges you because that's what they do. Whereas in a CrossFit gym, like no one really cares in the sense of like if the RX weight's 225 and you're using 55. Right. Like people aren't like – Look at this. Look at this little Would you peanut. look at this? Some, look at this somebody peanut. come and look at this. Somebody, <laughs> somebody come look at this little guy. <laughs> but no one really cares because that's where you're at. Right. That's what, like, we're all encouraging because you're here, you're doing it, you're moving, we're right. excited for you. Exactly. Like, you're trying. And some people don't like that, like cheering, like, hey, good job. Shut up. Don't cheer me. It's like, mm, okay. Yeah. But, but yeah, it's like once you realize that, you can drop that, like, oh, cool. Right. There's no expectation in the sense of like, I have to do this, otherwise I'm not welcome. Yeah, exactly. And I think, for me, some of the some of the most motivating and inspiring things that I've seen in CrossFit gyms are not are not the people hitting the you know, 600 pound deadlift PR. Right, it's right. like that's cool, but you're already fit. Like I, that yeah. doesn't motivate me. Yeah, like it's good for you. It's like the, you did awesome. But yeah, it's yeah. it's the people that did the couch to 5K type thing yeah. that that found ways to positively change their lives by coming into a gym. And those are the people we want to watch to be inspired and right. encourage uh, because of the, you know, those are the stories that mean the most. Right. Like I've gotten chills more times watching someone get their first bar muscle up, first pull up, first 400 without walking. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. that stuff's like, yes, cool. Like yeah. if you can do it, that is great. I can push through because I'm already like, like I think about those things. I remember – there was a uh, a workout I did. It was back home. I can't remember now what the workout was. I'm trying to remember, but it had a butt ton of wall balls in it. It was like a bunch of wall balls, maybe like rowing. It was, it was something like that, back and forth. And I remember that I wanted to quit the wall balls. I was in the middle of it, and I was just struggling. I got to thinking about a client that, that we had. Her name was Ashley. And she came in, and she worked her ass off every day. And she was, she was not fit when she first started, you know, at all. And – that was okay, obviously, but she came in, no excuses, nothing, and worked hard. Right. And, like, she, you know, like, let's say we're running 400. She ran 200. Let's say we're doing 500-meter uh, uh, rows. I made her do 300. Nice. Like, that's where she yeah. was in order to, to hit the stimulus. And no matter what, she's like, what am I doing today? This is what we're doing. This is what I want you to do. Cool. Let's awesome. do it. Right. And it was like, I mean, she would just work herself just every day, just trying so hard and never quit, never quit. And I just kept thinking about that. And I just kept thinking about that. And I was doing wall balls. And if you know me, I'm a pretty emotional dude. Freaking tears started coming up. Oh. In the middle of this workout, just, just –
like dude you got 50 more do just not go. stop yeah. just go and i just felt like myself finished the workout and i literally went outside and i just cried and it wasn't because of like oh poor me it was just like the emotional thought of someone like ashley coming in and kicking ass and trying hard every single day no matter where she started that just made me feel so good and kind of a reason why i bring that up was because it's like if you looked at all right i'm gonna try crossfit this dude is crying <laughs> <laughs> i'm not going yeah, in i'm there. not going in yeah, there that's or, a no for me or what's wrong with that guy? right you know yeah. it's like that's the kind of people who hit that man yeah <laughs> who hurt you yeah. but it's like the expectations is that you need to be able to do everything and everybody's staring at you and you're, it's like no that's not the case right right yeah i think I think for anyone who's spent time in, in a CrossFit gym or, um, you know, even for anyone who's new, you will you will quickly see that it's it's a it's a community of people that truly encourage each other and enjoy um, being there for one one another. Yeah. Um, you know, so certainly the, the past year has changed some things in terms of like how we can share equipment and right. and, you know, and. Fist bumps uh, be around each other and, yeah hey, yeah good job over there yeah exactly that's changed a little bit but you know it's starting to come back and and, and it's positive for for the sport and for gyms is yep. to be able to have that type of community yeah because it really does make a big difference like whenever you leave and you feel like encouraged because like uh there's a girl named sharanya she just started she uh we're during her one-on-ones i was teaching her deadlifts and we're working up to something just heavy for her and she was like i've deadlifted 85 pounds before and i was like that's great yeah and in my mind i'm like you're about to crush that. But all right, let's, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm happy for you. Yeah. And she pushed press 70 pounds the other day. Oh, my. And I was like, she's like, I cannot believe I just did that. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, just think about it. You did a 85 pound deadlift before you started. You right. Know? And exactly. she's like, wow. You know, she goes, I feel stupid for saying that. And I was like, no, that's your frame of reference. That's where you started. I just wanted you to realize that that that's a ceiling you're setting on yourself. Right. Whenever we can go go far but she kind of had an expectation on herself right i was like no get that out of here yeah and not to steal anything from our neighbors to the north the plan of fitness fitness, but i mean i think the i think the judgment free lunk alarm things gimmicky but it works yep um and honestly like i don't hate saying it because i do feel like that's what people want is to go into a judgment free space and that's that works for them and i mean i would like to believe that that that's what we have here as yep. well. Yeah, it is definitely interesting, like having the the no, like thinking about that, right. comparing ourselves to that. It's like, ooh, like you know, because yeah. they, they have pizza Mondays and yeah, that's we're not doing all that. No, no, not at all. But no tootsie roll bowl at the door. Yeah, <laughs> nah, that's needed. <laughs> Put that in the uh, suggestion box. Although there are Sour Patch Kids up by the. Don't touch my Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> those are mine. <laughs> Oh, but on that, who gets red, white, and blue Sour Patch Kids? Dude, freaking Ashley found what are you, those. You a communist? I did, Come on, you can't do red, white, red, white and blue. No. That's America. No, you can't <laughs> screw <laughs> with you can't screw with Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> we have a system. <laughs> we messed it up. Uh, but no, yeah, Ashley got those for me, and I eat those post workout. Yeah. Uh, nah. But no, uh, I, I like the idea of the judgment free zone. Um, but yeah, they've kind of, I feel like, kind of ruined that. But kind of on that thought is like the meathead thing, just yeah. like you've you've talked about in the past. And yeah, there's definitely I've heard a lot. <laughs> it and it's hard, right? Because like you can go into some classes and right, yeah. like it's like you get the wrong mix of people in there, yeah. or even just the appearance, the outward appearance of like dudes yeah. with their shirts off and like weight dropping, and you're like, this isn't for me, yeah. right? Like testosterone those, is too high here. And those are I, I've certainly been to some gyms where I'm like. I don't enjoy this atmosphere because yep. that's what it is. Uh, but I, I think it's I think it's important to just you know along the lines of like not every gym is the same. Not every CrossFit gym is just full of, of meatheads and yep. people with their shirts off and just like grunting and yep. like weights slamming all over the place. Um, so I'll, if you're new to CrossFit or you're you're someone who is you know looking to go to a gym. Drop the expectation that it's just going to be full of meatheads and people yep. who, who aren't like-minded like you. Right. You have your outliers of people, obviously, that, that kind of are that way. But I know that for me personally, like, I am the goofiest person, and I don't take shit serious nine times out of ten. 
But when I'm in the middle of a workout, I'm right. taking it serious. Yeah. Like people try to have a conversation with me, be like, "Hey, what's up, buddy?" What to? And I'm like, "Nee, yeah. nee." I'm like, "Can you?" Nee. I sucked on a squeaky toy. Can in you? between <laughs> asthma breaths. Yes, or exactly. Right. <laughs> I'm doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. <laughs> but but like so, I'm I'm taking what I'm doing seriously because I want to progress and push myself forward and see how far I can push. Right. So I can see where if you step into a space and you see that, like like you said, people dropping bars and. And, and grunting and like they got their shirt off and and so i can see where that is intimidating because it's like i do not do any of that. right but right. The, the thing is is the expectation for us or from us on you to do that is not there no it's at not. all that's what i like it's what i'm gonna do like i've had people in the past be like oh there's a lot of testosterone in this class and i'm like no there's not right that's just they're just razzing each other or they're just having a good time or they're just trying to work really hard. Right. Because I've had, like, I've taught some classes here and back home where you'll have, like, one person in the class that's not necessarily, like, serious. Like, they're, like, Mr. Serious in the background or Miss Serious in the corner. It's like, no. It's like, three, two, one, go. They're locked in. Right. Like, this is yeah, what I'm doing. Exactly. I'm trying to move fast. I'm trying to run fast. And they'll be like, oh, you, you, yeah, you're too fit for it. And it's like, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I see I see where yeah. you're coming from, but I think that comes from like a, a place of uh, I'm not on that level, so I need to bring everybody else to know that, you know, it's like a place of insecurity. Right, absolutely. So so when you see someone like really working hard or pushing themselves, like don't judge them because they're trying to push hard. Yeah, exactly. Because they're not judging you because of where you're at. Right. Like I know that some like our, our 830 crew – they're like, this is our social hour. And I'm like, totally. That's cool. <laughs> Great. If that's what you like, I'll yeah. chat with you the entire time. Right. But you might have like one or two people in there that's like really trying to push the weight or really trying to right. push the – cool. We'll cheer them on just the same as they would yeah, do. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, and everybody wants to come get their own thing out of it. Right. And, and I, there's certain days where I spend more time dancing than I do working out. But then similar sure, to you, sure. like – there's days where I come in and I'm I'm a puddle of sweat because that's what I wanted to get yeah, out of it that today. day. Right. Um, and I don't I I've never in our gym I've never come across anyone where I was like this dude is just pure meathead. Right. Same. You know yeah. I I think we've got a great group of people yeah. who who enjoy socializing but they also enjoy just getting their ass yeah. kicked. Anytime I have people drop in or just people that they're trying the gym out they're like damn your gym is full of athletes like. And they look at me like they're expecting me to be like a drill sergeant, like, all right, you need to get in. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. fart jokes and wearing yeah. my, my Christmas socks, right. you know, with my, typically it's a cartoon on my shirt. <laughs> Dude, the other day someone came in and I was watching cartoons here. Yeah, they're last like, Saturday you yeah. were sitting here like, and they're like, I need to speak the to the owner. And I'm like, oh, it's me. Sorry, I'm watching my cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but no, it's like the expectation from me is if you come in, no matter what version of the workout you're doing, scaled, RX, the froggy version, whatever, my expectation is for you to work hard right. during this point. If you're like, I'm just coming in to move, perfect. That's Great. where you're at. Yep. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to take that easy on you, but I'm going to scream at Lambert and be like, pick the bar up, let's go. Right. You know? right. It's because that's the expectation from me of what I got from you. So whenever people come in, like you said, we have a, a really good group of people here. It's like, we're all here to have a good time, but when it's go time, it's go time. Right, right. Like that's the expectation. It's it's time to work. Like, like anything is easy in the sense. Like I always say, running's easy. Running fast is hard. Right, yeah, right, absolutely. Like anybody can go out and run, walk, run, walk, yep. mainly walk. Maybe you jog like ten feet, but running fast sucks. Yeah, like a twenty minute friend. Right, that's not hard. Yeah, unless you're someone who's like extremely deconditioned, and you know I get it. But, like, Fran, 20 minutes, it's not hard. It's, if you have someone who has a sub five-minute Fran, you say, hey, I want you to do Fran in 20 minutes. Yeah. They're going to be like, okay. All right. I didn't what really else? get much Did out you of want this. me to do anything right, else? Right, right. <laughs> so, in my mind, I'm like, no, like, let's work hard. <clears throat> and then afterwards, let's let's crack open a beer. I don't even like beer. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, let's 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 just hang out, watch cartoons. Right. So, the I think the expectation here isn't necessarily you need to be a badass or a hard ass or, like, a, a top-tier athlete or any of that shit. It's – my expectation is at three, two, one, go. It's time to work. Right at the end of the at the end of the workout, we can come back to to back to zero of yeah. like let's have a good time. It's bullshitting around. Yeah, it's exactly right. Yeah. And and I will say, if you are potentially new to the gym or someone who's not been to a four, five, six p.m. class, yep. the appearance may seem like yep. a bunch of meatheads because we've got some of the tallest 
yep. humans and and Don't know we're why. all a bunch of you know soft asses really you know, <laughs> yeah, know. like we're all a bunch of lovers like but nerds we, and lovers and yeah man we have the yeah. tallest group of people i don't get it anytime we have people like drop in uh chris that used to coach for us he was like what in the what do you what are you doing to get these yeah. people like crazy. i swear to god we have like 20 to 30 guys that are over six foot tall yeah oh easily easily and sometimes they'll all be in the same class right, <laughs> right. it's like we're all fighting each other for the tall pull-up yeah. bars yeah and yeah, i have like, a bunch of tall pull-up bars oh i know i know the other day we were we had to just stagger just because we, we had so many tall guys in the class. Yeah. Like, there's only so many we can use. Yeah. So. I don't know. But, yeah, you're right. And I remember back home, our 5 o'clock class, I might have mentioned this on a previous podcast, was that people would be like, oh, I don't go to the 5 p.m. class because that's the competitor's class. And I was like, I coach that class. Yeah, <laughs> That's not a competitor's class. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's what I've heard. And I'm like, no, it's not. There's no such thing. Yeah, yeah. We don't, we not don't here. have that here, actually. Right. And the same with this one. Like, people would be like, oh, the 5 and 6 are the, the serious – like competitors and i'm like no dude that's just that's just when out, they can come outside looking in right that's what that looks like you know right it's, it's typically a full class 15 to 20 there's all these guys their shirts off girls their shirts off like sweaty just grunting it's like well that's when i turn the music way up <laughs> right right exactly <laughs> but no yeah so it, it's definitely if you are someone that's new and you see those classes and you're like ooh, like that that it's okay that like if they're working out next to you like uh i dropped into class last week and a girl was like oh don't work out next to me you're gonna make me feel so slow and i'm like listen linda her name's not linda karen karen <laughs> god i would hate to have the name karen <laughs> right you know now what i mean sucks. there's a girl back home her name's karen i used to coach her and i think about that all the time yeah. i'm like god that sucks poor lady poor lady but i'm like i was like no you're fine you're fine and then at the end of the workout we're done i was like hey good job and she's like, man, you're moving. And I was like, oh, I was trying. And she's like, every time you would get to this point, I'd be at this point. So my goal was to be at that point every time. Yeah. I was like, yeah, that, that that's it. That's how you do it. Right. You know what I mean? Like if you next to someone that's like way fitter than you, just be like, they're not going to lap me. That's yeah. my goal is right. to keep them from lapping me. Like it's okay. Like find your – you're in your own lane. We're not trying to cut you off in your lane. Right, exactly. Yeah. But but that's another way of keeping – keeping yourself like in check in the sense of like I, I saw in class on go to but they're all so competitive yeah so. yeah and and i honestly think like so so another potential stigma or myth i guess is that you know every class is the same and every crossfit gym is the same and i am here to tell you nope. not every specifically not every crossfit gym is the same nope. and and honestly like the, the classes, and you may be able to speak more to this, the classes within a gym are not no, always not all. the same. Depending. So, like at my old gym, we had a morning coach, a middle-of-the-day coach, and then a night coach. And that was it. Mm -hmm. Like, you coached the same classes five days a week. Right. So, it kind of created this, you know, like the morning class had their coach and their vibe. They, you know, evening class had their coach and their vibe. But you're right. Like, the I remember I had um, – there's a guy, he mainly uh, – his name's Eric. It's Aaron and Eric. He came into an evening class, I think it was like two weeks ago because he got off work at night. And he was like, holy shit, this is my first time to the evening class. I was right. like, yeah. And he's like, there's so much energy in here. Yeah. I was like, yeah, they're not just waking up. Yeah, no, work there's out. a lot of energy. But you're exactly right. Not not every class is the same in the sense of like energy level, how they are and all those things. Like, like even though all of our classes do the exact same workouts, right. like I'll coach some classes like, all right, guys, uh, Here's the workouts on the board. Here we're going to do this warm up, and I don't even explain the workout because it's like, I, like you have your L one, right? Like you're a coach. I'm not going to be like Lambert. We're doing squat snatches. That's What's the, that? It's because you know. Yeah. And if I have a class of people that know, I'll just be like, all right, it's up there. Here's a stimulus. Here's a pointer. Let's right. move on. Let's go. Um, right. Some classes, I'm like, guys, we're doing squat snatches, and I'll grab a PVC pipe and I'll demo, and it's right. because it's mainly new people. Sure. And, and that's fine. If you take a class that has mainly experienced people, which even saying that's hard because I know a lot of new people that'll be like, yeah, this whole gym, like they're, they're all, they've been doing this for years. Right. And I'm like, uh, they're three months in, they're a month and a half in. Yeah. She just finished her one-on-ones and right. they're like, really? And I'm like, yeah. Like, so the experience is kind of like base level or yeah, like, exactly. like face level rather. But, um, but if you're someone that is very, very new in in a space, uh, a CrossFit gym, wherever you're at, go talk to them like the coach and just be like hey uh, i know she didn't really explain can you what is a squat snatch or what is a what is a, a bar muscle up you know right like i have a girl that she's doing she can barely do banded strict pull-ups and she was doing it the other day she goes do you want me to do bar muscle ups or uh and i was like 
go grab a band. Yeah. And it was just like, <laughs> and it comes back to that experience of like, right. she just doesn't know. Yeah. You know, people, Cause I'll have people be like, Oh, how do we do ring muscle ups? And I'm like, I, and I don't want to be like, you can't. Right. Cause that's right. like a negative con, like a negative, like you can't do yeah. this. It's Here's like, what oh. we're going to have you do. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So not every CrossFit class is the same. Not every CrossFit gym is the same. And that's, that was something that was uh, talked about on Matt Frazier with Rogan that I thought was like, I, I wish, I mean, obviously all the gym owners and coaches out there were like, hey, they need to get someone who knows CrossFit gyms and classes and a coach on there to explain. Right. But it's kind of like, because he was like, you know, does not every CrossFit follow the same workouts? And he was like, there needs to be. And I'm like, no, no, there doesn't. Right. right. Like we have five ski ergs, two bike ergs, 10 uh assault bikes 12 rowers do you, i mean we have a shit ton of equipment a lot of stuff a lot of stuff and we've just accumulated over there's two assault runners like you don't need and this is a topic we can talk about is you don't need a lot of equipment to do crossfit yeah definitely not. and and that's something where it's like if there was a top-down program like all crossfit gyms follow this that means now you need 20 barbells men and women you right. need x amount of pull-up bars you need you know where it's like i know plenty of crossfit gyms that only have like a rower yeah exactly. or a bike like sometimes people come in and be like man we only have one bike and it's broken nine times out of ten yeah yeah exactly and i've and i've been to a lot of gyms um like i said when when i travel and that kind of stuff and there's just like there's different vibes there's different equipment there's you know there's I've been to plenty of gyms that don't have any skiers, so you right. know that that's never getting programmed. Or they've got, I don't know, um, the Echo bikes. Yep. And, and, yep. The, and so, like, every gym's kind of got different nuances in them. Um, so where just because it says CrossFit doesn't mean you're going to get the, the same thing same. out of it. Yep. But at the same time, CrossFit is just such a universal term. And, like, I go into a gym knowing the stimulus that I'll yes. likely feel. Yes. Regardless of if there's a skier or a rower or a run. Right. I, I go in with an idea of what to expect. Right. And, and that was like, uh, so whenever all that stuff with Greg Glassman went down a while back when all those gyms were like de-affiliating and stuff, and we had that conversation of de-affiliating, of just naming ourselves like Ute Fitness or something like that, and – I was completely against it right. for a majority of it. Um, the reason why is because that, yep. that exact expectation. Whatever right. you see a, a CrossFit, whatever CrossFit, you know that when you come in, it's probably going to be some kind of weightlifting, some kind of workout, or, and then it's going to be some kind of for time or, or something. There's an right. expectation. Right. The only bad thing about it is the negative expectation, yes. the negative thought. You know what yep. I mean? Like, oh, if you do CrossFit, you'll get hurt. Right. Oh, I've heard that if they, they don't really coach you in there. Yeah, and that that goes again back to not ever CrossFit gym is the same. Yeah, and I th and I think it's hard because there's people who have never been into a CrossFit gym and CrossFit gym and never done CrossFit that won't just because those those stigmas exist that we and, talked about. Yeah, and until they come and do it or talk to someone who does it, yeah. there's no real way for them to break that. Right. But like I know, like you said, if I see. I'm going to go to a gym that says CrossFit yep. when I travel or anything because it's real Same. easy for me to, like, Google CrossFit gym mm -hmm. near me than it is, like, fitness Functional fitness center, near me. Right? Like, yeah. and then I'm going to end up somewhere I don't want to be, and that's not the workout I intended right. to get. Right, right. Yeah, and and that kind of kind of touching on the whole, like, dropping in thing. And, like, when we have someone that's new or someone that's never done it, like I'm always, I always, we give a week free and I, and I've listened to plenty of podcasts and plenty of like gym owners that are like gym coaches to kind of help gym owners and stuff. They said like, you don't need to do that. You need to value that. Like they're there for that hour. Totally. I agree with that a hundred percent, except I feel like you need to show them your experience that you're giving them. Right. Absolutely. Because like, like you said, whenever you were first trying out different gyms, you went and tried out a bunch of different ones. And right. And you came here and you were like, Oh, I like this, this is cool. Whatever. Um, uh, but had we been like, all right, Lambert, I need you to pay me $20 per class. I'd be like, for what? Yep. <laughs> I don't know what I'm getting out of this Exactly, yet. yeah. I don't know. And then the other side of it, it's like, that's an investment. Right. Like, I'm investing in you, but I don't even know if I want to invest in you. That's why, like, when you go buy a new car, they don't not like, all right, you're going to test drive this? Give me 100 bucks. Right. They're like, okay, go test drive the car for buying a new house. You do a walkthrough to check it out. They're not like... That'll cost you 50 bucks or whatever, 20 bucks. Right. It's because you need to kind of see the experience of what you're getting 
then from that point on you can make some kind of a judgment right right exactly. but and that's why like whenever people come in they're brand new we give that week free it's because I, I literally would tell them i'm like hey there's a, a crossfit gym right up the street you can go check out there's a crossfit gym downtown you can go check out and I'll, I'll give them the name of it and i'm always like go check these other spaces right, out right and one i have confidence in our product enough that i feel like that we produce good results we produce a good product that when people come in i know that they know that they're going to get something right that's absolutely. worth them coming them back. coming back and then the other side of it too is like i just like i want people to feel welcomed right oh, absolutely I, I don't want you to feel like okay well i see you're just a dollar bill yeah give me money right I, like i see you as a person that i want to help right you don't you don't want to do the whole like oh before we get started i just need your credit card information yeah it's like yeah i don't even know you man yeah. like how do wh right. what if this class sucks and i'm yeah. never gonna get that money back <laughs> right exactly yeah exactly because i have taken some classes that i paid for and i'm like well that was fucking terrible right i'm really glad that i gave you 20 dollars to yeah. have a hours waste of time right yeah exactly but yeah we kind of got off subject a little bit but ain't mad that's all right yeah mad. no that's great it's good stuff but, but no like yeah not every gym is the same because you have different owners with different emphasis you have different coaches that have like different likes like uh mikhail does her western wednesday oh hate it i'm gonna have to come to that <sighs> it's, a, it's at 7 30 a.m let's Broski. do it there? yeah so i hate it so the other day uh i have been personal training a girl uh one of our members daughters she's a swimmer and it's at 7 30 on wednesdays if you know me you know i hate <laughs> country music but i was like you know it's her class yep. i'm gonna let her have this as much as this is like nails on a chalkboard to me i'm gonna let this go let her have her class that's her experience her cl her members in this class yeah know what, that they know what that's what they're gonna get but the other day it was a really shitty workout so i walked up to the computer to grab my drink and someone was like please change the music can you please <laughs> and i was like no it's mikhail and then like four other people were like please change the oh, music. So i changed on. it and then mikhail got really pissed i'm so, sure so sorry mikhail yeah but uh but no it's it's each coach has their own vibe each owner has their own vibe I know that I know some owners and coaches come from like a powerlifting background, so they emphasize weightlifting, or they come from a running background, so they emphasize more of cardio and running. Right. So it's like each gym, you're going to have a different vibe. Yes, you're absolutely. Gonna, you're gonna walk in and be like, oh, this is mainly for like even even uh, age. Yeah, definitely. I, I've had uh, we had a guy come in and he was trying to help us out. He's from Oregon with a, a few like back end stuff and he was like uh i had like i have the, some of the crossfit game stuff that tommy and them has won over the years just up on a shelf off to the side like it's not a focus it's not like if you come in my gym you would know yeah as right. you can see on the wall it's not about us it's not about our competitors or if you want to call them that it's all about the the everydayers but he was like at the end of he was like man he's like you guys are doing bar muscle ups and squats and like you sure you should be doing you know, he was, like, basically, like, questioning how we run our gym. Mm -hmm. And he did a full day of, like, watching classes and stuff like that. And then afterwards, he's like, oh, your demographic is way different than mine. Oh, interesting. He was like, uh, my demographic, my main age, or he's like, my average age is, uh, I think it was, like, 45 to 55. Okay. And he's like, that's my main demographic. Right. So he's like, that's what I program for. That's what I plan Got for. And he's it. like, you yeah. have a lot younger people. And even our, like, Vicky, she was like, I remember this one never leave me. We were, uh, she was my partner in an interval class. She was like, we need to teach these youngsters how to work. Yeah, that's right. I love that. <laughs> get them, Vicky. Let's get them. Get them. Teach them. Teach right. them. Right. But no, uh, and Vicky's in her 60s. You know what I mean? Yeah. And she's oh, freaking she really? awesome. Yeah. Wow. Dude. I know. And Badass. She crushes it. Mm -hmm. But you have, like, Rhonda, Vicky. You have, like, uh, uh, Ladee. Freaking Ladee is, like, a she's Beast. an anomaly yeah but uh but no it's like so you, we still have our older clients but i don't care yeah in the sense of like i'm not programming for the games i'm not programming for our competitors i'm programming for everybody right but he even said at the end of the day he's like oh your demographic's a lot different than mine right so it's right. like your focus and the vibe in the gym and those things are way different. different yeah yeah uh, absolutely because i know in the evening classes you guys hang out and talk you'll take the five o'clock class hang out for an hour leave at seven chat yep, yep. that's what we and do. and other gyms i know and you've dropped into these we've talked about in the past it's like they have their hour up yep see you later you get in and you get out yeah you yep. talk to the people in your class and you leave that's it. right right whereas like here we have like a lounge area we yeah. have like there's certain areas that you can hang out like we're gonna do like the cinco de mayo yeah. day and it's like the our plan and thought process behind it. it's like let's create this community of people that feel welcomed and want to talk and hang out and 
hang out afterwards and he said he was like yeah my demographic is the 45 to 55 they come in for their hour and they leave yep and he's yep. like yeah so he's like because he was like you gotta get these people out man he's like they're talking too loud they're making the next class and i'm like dude that's what we do you see how many people are in my classes <laughs> yeah it's like there's a reason for it right it's because of like i'm not like shooing people out like no. you got your hour bro get out right exactly and it is you like you get to know like the people in the class before you and then yep. in your class and then in the class after you and it's like this big cycle of, yep. of just meeting so many in, meeting and being around so many new people because like one of the things that uh and i've talked to you about this is when i went to ben bergeron's uh, business of excellence yep immersion thing with my old gym one of the things they do is they start each class five minutes late and try to end five minutes early right because there's that little 10 minute window sure before class gets to talk to the next class next class gets to talk you know yep and it creates that community that bond and stuff like that and we kind of tried to like keep that in the sense of like hey like today or yesterday we have a girl that's just applying to get in dental school and we have brian hedinger that's graduating i was like Brian, have you met uh, Jordan? Oh, cool. Right. And she was like, no, I haven't. And I was like, he's graduating dental. And she was like, oh, and they talked the entire oh, class. Cool. You know? Yeah, like, that's awesome. Because she's just trying to, like, get experience and understand. But it's that. It's yep. that kind of kind of building. So, like, kind of bringing this back to where it all came from was not ever CrossFit gyms the same. Right. It's not. It's definitely not. And um, I've enjoyed the opportunity to see so many different gyms. And um, there's some, like I said, there's some I like. There's some I don't. But. But ultimately, when I find CrossFit, I know what to expect, kinda. Yep. Um, but but certainly know that there's gonna be differences along the way. Yeah. There's so. what is it? High intensity functional movement. Functional movements executed at high intensity. Functional across broad time and modal domains. You'd think we'd know this constantly. No, I didn't memorize the the words. It was executed like, at a high intensity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Something. Yeah. Along it's, on the, it's on the wall. That's somewhere. right. Just look at the uh, wall. Consistency, if you need to. perseverance, turn up the music. Hey, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but no, just uh. And to kind of like bring this to a full head on on the the subject of not every gym's the same is like our our goals is at our gym and I'd say at ninety percent of the gyms out there is the CrossFit Games is not the goal. It is not the goal. Yeah. And if you are, let's see, how do I put this lightly? If you are someone who's like, hey, I want to make it to the CrossFit Games, great. We'll we'll do what we can to help you yes. get to that point. But you should not look at the CrossFit Games and think, by doing CrossFit, that's what I'm preparing for. Yes. Because those the CrossFit Games is, is something different than what we're doing. Yep. <laughs> it may look similar. Way different. And the verbiage may be similar. Yep. But that is not what we're doing. Yep. It's cool because you get to see the super athletes, whereas like in football, unless you've played football, like I have no frame of reference. I know that football players in like the NFL and like even like the I guess you could I don't even know what the hell they're called like minor leagues right like the what is are they called of minor football? leagues yeah like, no, like I mean the, they've got like arena and like they don't have a minor leagues for football hmm. they've got I mean the NFL is really the only product and then there was an AFL which was arena for a while there was there's like practice teams though and okay stuff like yeah, that, so maybe? there's yeah there's a practice squad on every NFL okay. team. But, like, you're still technically then on the NFL yeah, team. Okay. So, obviously, no frame of reference yeah. on any of this yeah. stuff. But, like, I so I personally – but I understand, like, the, the strength that they have and those things. So, I understand that just from being in the gym day in and day out. Um, but what's cool about CrossFit, though, is, like, we're learning a snatch. And I give you this empty bar. We're trying to learn this. You watch the games. You see some of those girls snatching 240, 235, and you're like, oh, Puts it in perspective. Yeah. Man, like that is possible. Right. But you, at the end of the day, it's like looking like here's a football. I'm going to teach you how to throw it. And then you see, you know, Brett Favre freaking chunk it like 80 yards, yeah. you know. Yeah. Hook it, chug it, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but, uh, but you see him throw it, and you're like, wow, that's possible. Right. You know what I mean? But the frame of reference of, like, what it actually takes to read – I remember Enderly was was talking to me and a, a, a client that I trained, Mo, about, like, just one play and all the different uh, the ways it goes into it. And he's like, yeah. it's like chess. Yeah, well, it absolutely and He's like, you're is. watching this person move, and then this person's trying to help you see – you know, and I was like, yep. holy shit, yep. there's so much that goes into one play. Absolutely. So I, I never really realized that until he broke it down. But – had I not had them break it down, I'm like, yeah, they're just big guys hitting each other. Yeah, you know, that's what everybody thinks. Yeah. Big dumb people just, but that's it's right. like they're actually really meat smart. Heads. Right? Yeah, meatheads. Uh, but so it kind of gives you a frame of reference to see what's possible at the end. But that's not the goal that we're aiming for. 
in the sense of like I'm not training you to make it to the CrossFit Games. Right. I'm training you to be healthy. Yep. And when you go to the doctor and they check your blood pressure, they check your uh, the what is it A1C for your uh, the blood sugar. Yep. They they check all of those things and everything's in a healthy range. Yep. You exactly. Know what I mean? And I don't even talk about like weight. I'm just talking about like your all your numbers that correlate into health. What does that look like? Okay, so it's just like the continuum that they have in CrossFit. It's sickness, wellness, uh, uh, what is it, fitness? Sickness, sickness wellness, yeah, fitness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the thought process behind that is if you are you have any of those those numbers that are that are in a unhealthy range, yep. then you're in the sickness range. Yep. But once we get you to the wellness, then you're in the middle, everything's healthy, good, yep. awesome. And then if fitness. you need to go run or if you want to go hike or if you want to go play catch football or touch football, if you want to go play with your grandkids or if you want to, if you need to, take pick up a bag of dog food or if you want to do some gardening you have those capabilities yep for sure and then once you get that then we can try to progress that more if that's your goal yes exactly if you get that then we just maintain right you know what i mean like the thought process is to push off the the retirement home as far as we can yep because you don't want to get to a point where you can't even get yourself on and off the toilet yeah Exactly. exactly so so like the crossfit games is cool in my mind because I, I enjoy watching that. it is cool to watch but it is yeah. not the it is not the the goal yes exactly and and i've and i've heard a lot of people um who who haven't done crossfit like oh i saw it on tv i can't do that right, I, was like, right. Well, I can't do that either that's yeah. but that's not why right that's not why we do crossfit at this level of it that's right. you know however many people signed up for the open that's what CrossFit is. Yes. That's the, those are the people that the first double under, the first pull yeah, up that make it what it is. The CrossFit Games is is just a spectacle of of freaks. Freaks. Yeah, I mean for a, for a lack of better yeah. word, but it is cool yeah. like how you were saying like we get some perspective to see, you know, somebody do 30 bar muscle ups, right. bar muscle ups on broken and be like, "Whoa." Yeah. Like that's I impressive. struggle to do 3 bar muscle yeah. ups on broken. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like yeah. That's what where the CrossFit Games is cool, but but it is not what what we're doing on a day to day. No, and and if and to be honest, if you're watching this and you're like, man, I I just I, I would love to make it, but I feel like you're kind of shooting my dreams down. Come in and train and realize what those guys and girls are having to do in order to get to that right. get to that position, in order to get to those games to be the the one percent of the one percent. Yep. And and that's hard. Yeah. And know that that's a long road depending on where you're starting, like your level, like know that that is that it's attainable yep. if you're able to put in the time and effort and have some good genetics in order right. to get there right because a lot of people don't realize the whole genetic side of things is it plays a huge key sure sure because it's like me and you like we're over six foot yeah if Not we're if we're and i don't care how fast we learn to do air squats <laughs> we can never do square, right. square squats as fast as matt frazier right that's not gonna have five foot six or something yeah. like that yeah. it's like dude's like ding 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 right. ding we're Long range of motion, so our genetics plays against us in yep. that in that yep. in that way. But like CrossFit Games, uh, that level of fitness, that level of movement, and that level of strength, that level of all that stuff is not our goal to get you. Right, exactly. And we're we're never gonna like unless you're fully prepared to like not have a job and like yeah. do now all it's of, that way. Do all of the things that these CrossFit Games athletes are doing. I don't think that should be your expectation, but if you if you are prepared to do that, then then come in and, yep. and Madison will get I'll, you going in the right I'll, direction. I'll try my best. Yeah, <laughs> right. I'll try my best. Right. But I would say start out just start out trying to RX every workout in the in the class. Yep. Once you get to that, then your goal is to try to be in the top of the leaderboard every day. Once you get to that, then we keep progressively right. taking right. steps. But it's like you got to start seeing the pyramid that you got to try to climb. Yep. Um, exactly. But if if and if that's not what you want, perfect. Let's Good. let's work on yep. on other stuff. Yeah. Like there's oh, it's always open ended. You know what I mean? Like you can Definitely. focus because it's like like us. Like we have focuses throughout the year. We're like, yeah, let's get in here. Let's train. Let's two a days. Let's yep. kill it. We're ready. And then sometimes we're like, God, I just I just hop on the bike. For I'm just minutes. lucky to be here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go foam roll for an yeah, hour. Exactly. But uh. But one of the other things is, uh, I think that a, a good conversation to kind of dive into and end on would be like uh, needs. Yep. Like myth needs, and that's like supplements, equipment, yeah. shoes, like yeah, all those things. As soon as you I start can, putting, I think we can kind of put that into a box. Yeah, yeah. It's funny. I do a lot of comparisons to golf 
But it's a lot, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm big into golf. I need to get this new driver. Today. Right. Mm, you know, do you really? Yeah. Like, and there's, oh, well, the new Nanos came out. I need those. Nah, yeah. you don't no. need, you know, on top no. of the list, you don't need CrossFit shoes to no. do CrossFit. They help, but you know, you don't. Sure. I mean, no. but. Go barefoot. Right. Exactly. I've, I've never done a CrossFit workout in a pair of like Nanos sliders. or other shoes that, yeah, sliders yeah. or those. That you know hindered my performance right. sure there's 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 a reason they exist right but if you're like hey i'm just starting crossfit i gotta go get crossfit shoes maybe talk to your your coach, coach yeah. and and understand what the benefit of that is before you like dive into this investment right like Rhonda wore her running shoes this morning because like her knees and stuff it helps her with that like she run her wore running shoes and then she wanted to do some squats after and she's like oh, i'm not wearing the right shoes and brian goes shake your shoes off go barefoot yeah exactly she was like oh good idea yeah so she did that right so it's like cool like you don't even need those things like we talked we had that whole episode and you kind of made a joke about it earlier like we had a whole episode about equipment yeah you don't need nice to job. have yeah, you don't need any yep. of them. you really don't like yeah. we supply like as much as we go through our jump ropes like crazy right we supply jump ropes we supply all these things like just show up right just show up right then uh, the the last thing is like we've kind of dabbled in this a little bit and obviously my only experience in this is just from what i've taken and that's supplements sure like you don't really need any of that. there's a reason why it's called a supplement right like it's supplemental too yep everything that you can get from supplements you can get from just eating food yep. Yep. and you know i i do take supplements only because i and you know i'm bad about eating a consistent breakfast yep. and, and do eating stuff after i work out so for me i enjoy taking having supplements right. but they're not a necessity like my life doesn't depend on me taking this you know whey protein in the morning right, right. yeah and and like you said like if you're someone that does struggle with eating breakfast every morning or like typically if you come in the evenings and you work out and then you get super hungry and you tend like you're nine times out of ten you're going to go ham on some hamburgers and right, cheeseburgers and, right. and it's because you're hungry like i was working with a client and he was like yeah after i leave the gym he's like i just feel like i have no self-control i was like you drink protein he's like no i was like start doing that because that'll push off that hunger a little huh, bit right and i didn't tell him that because he needs protein he needs to take weight no it, it's to, to help in the sense of like those things yeah like a like a our schedule is all over the place. Sometimes I coach in the morning, sometimes I coach in the evenings. Like it's everywhere. I get up at four thirty, or right. you know, wake up my normal time. So in those days that I'm feeling super tired, like I'll take pre work. I take pre workout every day. Yeah, like I'll snort that stuff. Same. But no, Same. but no, I, like I, it's because I love the way the pre workout makes me feel. Right. And then especially on those days that I'm dragging, I'll take it. It's and a nice like, little extra little, boost. Yeah, it's right. just caffeine. It's right. really all right. it is. But it's not needed. Yes. But it does help. Right. But like the, the, the supplement stuff, if you have any questions on that, ask any of us because I know a lot of stuff about it just from experience of. Just don't get anything from GNC. No. Whatever you do. They will charge you double. That's right. It's about like wood right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like triple the price. Yeah. Come ridiculous. try our protein. This right. is great. Right. The no. only thing you need is the will and desire yeah. and motivation dun, to get in here and bust your dun, ass. Dun, dun, dun. That's it. Don't. You just need the eye of the or tiger. That's all you need. I the tiger. Yeah, that's all you need. That's, right. that's all you need. But uh, I don't know. Do you have any other? No, man. I think I think we could probably go on and on about funny myth yep. things we've seen, but yep. those are some of the, the main ones that came to mind. And Yeah, something we kind of almost touched on and then kind of went away from, but the, the needing the equipment. Yeah, yeah. Something I, I think COVID really brought to a lot to a lot of people is that you get, get a dumbbell. Yeah. I, and you don't honestly, need anything. No, you could honestly do. So it's so funny. When everything was like sold out, Yeah. Um, the one place I had everything was Play It Against Sports. Have you ever heard of Play yeah, It Against yeah, Sports? Yeah, right down the road. Yeah, and there's one over by me and Cottonwood Heights. I went and they had like everything. Everything. I got a 50-pound dumbbell. Obviously, I borrowed some stuff from here, but I will still, if I'm at home and I want to do something extra, yeah. everything I could do, I could I want to do yeah i could do with a 50 pound dumbbell right so. yeah i mean a, a dumbbell you don't you don't really like i remember we were um we were traveling went up to seattle for a vacation and a buddy of mine he'd move up to washington so we swung by on the way to, to say hi and stuff and i was like man i really need to move and i was like do you got any workout equipment he's like oh i got us a slam ball oh, i was like cool so i grabbed that and literally found a corner yeah of a chain link fence in their house and I did slam balls. I think it was 10 down to one or, or something of slam balls and burpees. Yeah. Oh, I did that. Crushed. Put on some headphones. Felt like 
you know, death afterwards. Yeah. But, you know, it felt good. It felt right. good. I was like, cool, I moved. I got a little sweaty. Awesome. Right. That's all I needed. Right. And that's what uh, another great thing about CrossFit is that it helps you learn that you don't need a ton of stuff. Like yeah. used to when you go to a hotel uh, gym, you're like, they only have right, right. dumbbells up to 50 and or treadmill. And you're it's like, like, oh, God, that's that, going to suck. Yeah, yeah. We know now <laughs> right. you're like, that sounds terrible. Yeah. But back then it's like, oh, I need the sh- machines and I need to be able to, you know, I need a barbell. And it's like, no, bro, you, yeah. you don't. It depends on what your goals are and your focus is. But you really don't need a right. lot. You, I mean, in fact, you don't need anything. I mean, no. you could program something that's got running air squats, sit-ups, and push-ups, and it would be terrible. Horrible. And you yeah. could do that variation of something of those long the lines every day. Every single day. Yep. Absolutely. And you could crush it and right. get really fit. But, uh, but no, I hope that this kind of shed some light on some things yeah. that people think and, and expectations. And if you come across any other, like, myths or thought things that you'd be like, oh, this was what I thought before I started, let us know because we'd be curious to hear it too. Yeah, yeah, because – yeah, like, yeah, there's still stuff that people bring up to me. I've been coaching now for eight years. I'm like, right. what? What? That's what you thought? What? <laughs> for right, sure. Whatever. But, uh, but yeah, so uh, that and share this to people. That way they can see about the myths of CrossFit. For sure. And those things. Come and, see us. And if they want to chat, whether, you know, they're here or not, shoot me an email. Shoot me a text message. Give them my number, whatever. Yep. I'm willing to talk to anybody about it. And Slide in his DMs. At Coach Matty P. That's what I'm talking hey. about. Hey. At Coach Matty P. Find me on the ground. <laughs> but, uh, but, no, thanks for uh, jumping in and listening again. Awesome. Yeah, thanks, guys.